Is he bigger or have I got two? Or what's the go? I've got two! <laughs> hey, you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. G'day folks, today I'm going to introduce you to a new technique that I used to use when I was a kid called drop shotting. Now if you Google or YouTube search drop shotting or drop shotting rigs, they all tend to look a little bit different. This is just how I do it. First I've got a sinker down the bottom, I've got a loop in the line with a hook on it, exactly, the, it's just a Pat Noster rig basically, with a Strike Tiger Nymph in the new coffee colour, and up the line I've got just a hook tied to the main line with a Strike Tiger uh, 1.5 inch curl tail grub in banana shot colour and a normal hook. Both of the hooks are normal hooks, neither of them are jig heads. Now, what you do, you poke the line through, then you tie it directly to the hook. And you tie that, like in this case I've gone about a metre up from the sinker. That's tied directly to the hook, that's just to prevent tangling. If you had two droppers, well you've got more chance of getting tangling, so that one stays on the main line. You then run a loop off the side here, put a hook on, and you put a soft plastic on. Now, there is out there a bit further. The sinker, the reason for that is for casting distance. I can cast that a lot further than I can cast the jig head. It will sink a lot quicker than I can cast the jig head. So the drop shot rig enables, gives me the casting distance of a much heavier lure. Look at that cast way out there, and it sinks quicker, and it allows me to get small lures out into deep water and quicker. So that's probably already on the bottom now, so all I need to really do now is just reel that in nice and slow. The sinker will keep it down, and I've got two soft plastics swimming through the water there. The force of the water coming against them, and I've already hooked a fish on one of them by the feel of it. Or have I got a snag? <laughs> oh, I think I might have had a bit of grass actually. I had something heavy, but it wasn't really putting up much resistance, so I think I just the sinker might have hooked a snag. But anyway, that's all you do. So I'll cast it out again, you just walk the banks, casting that right out, letting it sink. I don't know how deep that is, but even if it was like 10 feet deep, that's probably already at the bottom. And now I just uh, hold it run up a little bit and then reel it in. The sinker generally stays down quite deep, and there's two plastics there for the fish to choose from. Got him. There we go, I've got one. Sometimes you can catch two fish doing this. Have I got him on the yellow or have I got him on the coffee? I've got him on the yellow. <laughs> there we go folks, just casting it out and reeling it. Oops, now I've got him on nothing. Oh no, he got away. <laughs> he took the banana shock. He took the one that's tied to the main line. Sometimes you can catch two fish doing this. It's quite often you'll you reel it up and there'll be two. And you can use this by bobbing it. You can just lower it down and lift it up and down, sort of bob it under the boat like that. Or you can use it from the bank like I am now to cast as far as you can. I had to go to Albury today. I had to go to the camera shop there. And I thought, while I'm up there, I'll duck out to Lake Hume. I forgot to bring me uh, any sort of footwear other than my good runners that I don't want to wear in the water. So I need something that'll allow me to cast further out in the water. And that's why I've gone the drop shot rig. Got one on here. What have I got it on? Oh, something bit me on the leg. What have I got it on? It might be a bit bigger, this fish. Either I've got two, or it might be a little bit bigger. Is he bigger, or have I got two? Or what's the go? I've got two! <laughs> oh, there's one of them got off. <laughs> one of them got off. I had one on the coffee nymph, which is this one. They are a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger than a lot of the small ones we get here. Not quite big enough. But by using this system, it allows you just to get out that big bit further and fish a little bit deeper and find those bigger fish. 
Now, even though I forgot to wear the right shoes so I can't walk in the water, one thing I didn't forget was an esky with some ice in it. So I'm just a little weeny bit bigger than that, and I'm breaking its neck. Here's a news flash. That's going in the esky. <laughs> the daily double. Hey, Percy! Percy the Pelican! I've got the daily double! I've got another one, Percy! Oh, I wonder if I should give this one to the... Oh, that's hooked up on something, I think. This is pretty heavy as well. I've got the daily double. I'm holding it up really high because there's a fair bit of grass and weed out there. I don't want to say I've caught a fish and then reel in a, uh, reel in a weed. No, I've got a fish, but I've only got one. It's only the single because here comes the... Uh, I've got both. I've got a fish and I've got... So the, the grub caught the grass. The nymph caught the redfin. Percy, you want some lunch? Hang on. Sorry, Redfin, but you're getting sacrificed to the gods of Pelicanis. All right, I'll just uh, dispatch of him while the camera's not looking. Now, you'll see now he's uh, D-E-D, -E dead. Percy, it's all yours, mate. The drop shot rig. It's working a treat. I don't think Percy wants that Redfin. Either that or he just doesn't want to come too close to me, one or the other. So look, I'm not even working that lure, I'm just reeling it in slowly. I'm, it's just what they call a flat roll, which is just a straightforward retrieve. No need to jiggle it up and down like I often do and put a bit of life in the plastic. It's a bit hard when you've got a sinker on the end to do that. So it's just what they call a flat roll or just a straight, just a straight cast and retrieve like you would a bladed spinner. And I can see just there, the yellow looks great. They both look really, really good coming through the water. Now, the problem with this rig is if your bale slams shut and you yank it like that, you use, you'll lose a sinker, two hooks and two soft plastics. I better go and re-rig. Righto, so now that I'm, uh, I've got a re-tie, I'll walk you through how I rig it. Alright, I get the end of my line. I go through the first hook. I go through from the bottom. I go up. Yeah, I reckon about that far. Now, it, it, it varies from waterway to waterway and the type of fishing you're doing. But in here, I reckon 60 or 70 centimetres is more than adequate. And then I wrap that through twice. You see that? Or well, two or three times. I go another time. Sounds really gross, but I sort of put a bit of spin on my fingers and just sort of put a bit of spit on the knot. And that just sort of lubes it a little bit. Now... I put my sinker right down the bottom end. If I can get it out of my pocket. Right, now I'm going with a ball sinker. I've got some bigger, heavier sinkers here. I've got the, the signature series bait weights that were made for me by Matt Thurling and his sons. Um, I love those sinkers when I'm bait fishing, but for this I don't think they're great. The whole idea of those flat sinkers like that is it so the current doesn't wash them around? I actually want the sinker to be able to move across the bottom here without getting tangled on, any, on anything. So it makes sense to use a ball sinker. Right, so now I've got, so far I've got my hook up the line there and my ball sinker down the bottom. Now what I want to do is just pull a loop in the line just like I would a Pat Noster rig. Just up from the sinker. I reckon that's enough. It doesn't need to be a very, a very big loop either. You probably don't even need a loop. You could probably just tie it to the hook to slot that. It'd probably still work. Right, so I've got my loop there. Now I'll cautiously grab this hook out of my pocket. Hopefully it hasn't pierced my nipple. All right. That goes through there. And that's rigged, ready to go. So there's my rig. All that's left to do now is chuck a couple of plastics on and uh, away we go. So I'll do that now. I'm going to go with the exact same plastics I was using. I'll put a banana shock. On the red hook at the top. That hook doesn't feel very sharp. That seemed to have trouble piercing that... Uh, that plastic, it's got a burr or something on the end of it. Now, we'll see how it goes. And I'll put the, uh, this hook feels a lot sharper. I'll put the little nymph on this little hook. There we go, folks. That's the double drop shot Lake Hume 
Redfin Robbie special rig. <laughs> That's all you do. That's all you do. So the sinker, the whole purpose of the sinker is for casting distance and uh, to keep the, the, the small soft plastics down. That's the whole purpose of that sinker. Oh, Percy's lost faith in me, I think. He's moved way over the other side of the bloody lake over there. On well, the other side of the bay, the lake's enormous. But I don't think he ate that redfin. And realistically speaking, a redfin that long to a pelican is probably the equivalent of one chip to me. He probably wants a big carp, about six or seven pound to keep him happy, I reckon. Got him. Uh, hooked up. Bloody grass out there, I keep hooking up on the grass. Now I've got him, I've got one now, that's a fish. <laughs> Have I got one or have I got the daily double? The first cast with the new rig, I think I've only got one. I have got Uno, which is Latin for one. And he's taken the banana shock. Oh, well, I was a bit worried about that hook being not sharp enough, but it seems to be all right. A little bit small, see you later, mate. Okay, I'm on. He's small. Unless I've got two, because it's got a bit heavier. It's just gotten a bit heavier. Have I got two? It's always a bit extra. No, I only got one. This time he's on a nymph. You never know. Looks, I reckon something's hit the grub. He's uh, been pulled off the hook a little bit. But this fella's taken the nymph. You never know what you're going to catch him on. <laughs> See you later, mate. Gee, just a little bit bigger and I'd be able to get a fillet off him. He's just not quite there yet. You may notice I'm holding my rod a lot higher. That's because the sinker will drag the bottom too much if I have it too low. So I hold it up just to keep the sinker down a little bit. I kept the sinker up off the bottom a little bit. Oh, look. Oh, that bird's got the fish. I put that fish there for the pelican. Now Percy's come along, he says, Give me back my red fin. And this bird said, ah, I got your red fin. <laughs> They're laughing at him, I can hear them. Percy, you, you had your chance. <laughs> oh, Seagull, he's got no hope. He's, he's just waiting for someone to eat fish and chips. <laughs> I'm heading down where the water is much deeper. I reckon an itchy palm is a sign that you're about to come into money. I'm going to be a bloody millionaire before the day's out. I'm so itchy. I know why. Well, one of those redfin probably spiked me. They're good, they're good for that. You touch them redfin spikes, they don't make you sick. They just make you very bloody itchy. Got him. Oh yeah. There you go. He's taken the yellow, the banana shock, the top hook. The whole idea of the drop shot rig was to get me out further to where the fish are bigger. I'm heading out to where the water is much deeper and the fish are much bigger. <laughs> But anyway, folks, that is a drop shot rig. A lot of people just use one and they tie it straight to the main line like that. I like to have a second one on a dropper, like a Pat Noster rig, so that it can swim freely. I just think with that uh, coming off that loop, just enables it to swim a bit more freely. If you're fishing from the bank, this is the best way or my favorite way to do it. If you're from a boat or a kayak and you're just going to be bobbing up and down, I think you'd be best off having both... Uh, having both hooks on the main line and having no dropper. And you could do this with both hooks on the main line. You don't have to have that loop. That's just the way I like to do it. A drop shot rig. I think Berkeley had a fishing rod a few years ago called a Berkeley drop shot. But if you hear people talking about drop shotting, that's what it is. Give it a go, especially if you want to cast out further and get out, get down deeper, but with a smaller lure. Thanks very much for watching, folks. I hope you found this video informative and educational. <laughs> if you have liked it, why not give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and hopefully I'll see you in my next video.